They arbitrarily came up with a safety factor, which is not a safety factor at all. Uh, and they set limits based on that theory. Heating is the only harm. All these biochemical changes are well, it is known that there are cellular impacts from uh, non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation. There are biological impacts. And there are so many studies. I mean, I wouldn't even, well, I could start. I mean, I could start just listing them, but there are, there's no lack of studies in people like um, people who use cell phones for long-term who de and long-term defined as 10 years who developed brain cancer on the same side of the head where they hold the phone. There are studies on teenagers that after one year of use of a cell phone to the head, then they were tested with a memory test before the beginning and then a year later after a year of use and those who use the cell phone most with a cell phone to the head had damage to the memory that they found in the test that applied to that exact part of their brain where the scientists had um done you know understood that that's where the most radiation went into the brain there's animal studies such as the national toxicology program a 30 million dollar study that used looked at rats and mice and found the male rats developed the same kinds of tumors that studies in people who use cell phones long-term did, um, gliomas and schwannomas. Uh, and they that study was designed and put forward because the FDA said many years ago in 1999 that we don't have enough research. We need more hard research. We don't, we need to see what's you know, could this be harmful for the long term? Let's do animal studies. We need large scale animal studies, said the FDA. So the National Toxicology Program did the large scale animal studies and they found increased tumors. They also found genetic damage in tissues in the mice and the rats. And then the FDA said they didn't agree with the National Toxicology Program study. So that's where some of the confusion is, is this constant attacks on studies that shows harm. But when taken as a whole, what scientists say, hundreds of scientists who've published in the field say it is clear that there are effects at levels uh, well below what governments say is safe and we must reduce exposure. Okay, so just to clarify, just kind of the same question, but so how many studies are there showing that there's a risk from wireless radiation? How many studies are there showing that it's perfectly safe and there is not a risk? Where are these studies if someone wanted to follow up themselves? And are these large studies or are they just like five or 10 people? You know, so in other words, let's have the whole, not by, you know, trying to steer people in one way or the other. How many studies are there show there's a problem? How many studies are there showing that it's safe? Where do you find these studies? And how big are these studies? Mm, that, those are great questions. But so it depends on when you start counting studies count people there's a lot of scientists that count studies so there was an article published in the lancet you don't mind if in fact i could show you where all these studies are that had um let me let me pull it up if you want numbers and i apologize that i didn't come prepared with a number but um i can't answer that question actually um so one second first go to our website if you want to C studies under the science tab. We have top studies. I have numerous studies on there. I could even show you if I can share my screen too. If you're interested. Um, go actually go to, um, you know what, on scientific evidence, hover, go up to scientific evidence. Yeah, top studies. Do you see it there at the top? And I have some of, not all the top studies, but um, let me get you some numbers because I know you want some numbers. You just want to know, is there like two or three studies on this? Oh like, no, uh, thousands. So I was trying to get you the right thousands. So, so you're, uh, you're saying there's thousands of studies saying thousands of radiation? Studies. Are they yes. big studies? Are they a lot of people in or, or animals? Well, there are a variety of studies. So the Lancet, which is a very respected journal, Lancet Planetary Health published an article um, it's Bandera and Carpenter that reviews this issue and says a recent evaluation of 2,266 studies 
including in vitro and in vivo studies in human, animal, and plant experimental systems and population studies, found most studies, 68%, have demonstrated significant biological or health effects associated with exposure to um, you know, human-made electromagnetic fields. So um, that is only from, I believe, a few decades. There are a lot of slicing and dicing that goes on with studies. So there are some studies that are six bunnies. There are some studies that are 50. There are studies that have thousands of rats. There are studies that look at um, you know, hundreds of people. And there are studies that look at experimental studies, for example, might not look at that many it was certain with people. There's they would look at much less people, right? But then you might have the um the studies where you follow people long term that have much more people or mother-child pairs. So, so these studies have done on both rats and also humans. Oh yes, rats, mice, humans. Okay. Um plants, trees. So you're saying though that there are thousands of studies. There are thousands of studies because even before, um, like when people start counting studies, it might be the last decade or two decades, there have been decades of studies even before then that were done. Uh, Zori Glazier was a uh, sci scientist who worked on this in many different capacities and many different government agencies. And actually, he would do yearly or sometimes four times a year reports to the uh, to the U.S. government on all of these studies. And I even have some, except they're behind a wall right now. But I um, we don't need them. That's I OK. Just moved in here. But I have like his compilation. So there was so many studies that were done. Yeah. And. And, and the studies uh, that are the studies that. How many studies are there that are credible and large that show that there's no problem with wireless radiation? I don't have that exact number, but um, I would, I mean, I would say hundreds of studies. I mean, they're all, you know, every study, here's the thing about science. Every study has a value. So sometimes some scientists, I mean, now I'm jumping into the, the, how scientists work, but they might do like a beginning study just to see, you know, does this, does the application of the exposure, does it work? Do, you know, and they start out small um, and then they do larger studies based on that. Uh, Dr. Hugh Taylor from Yale, he was a uh, chief of OBGYN at Yale uh, Medicine. Um, he did a study on mice and he took pregnant mice and exposed them to uh, cell phones, a cell phone on the cage, and then tested the offspring when they were born and found that they developed damaged memory and more hyperactivity. He says if mice could have ADHD, that's what they would have. Now, after that study came out, and that was a very credible study, I mean, and uh, clearly showed results in the study. I remember in the press conference, because I was at the press conference, where he said, and we are going to be doing more research on this. Now, where, why has there been no more research from that on that? What what happened? Well, there was no grants that were given. Why not? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that they haven't been able to. Uh, there's been no additional research, and you'll find from that particular group, even though there's a lot of research in, from other groups. And actually Dr. Hugh Taylor is on our board and working with us and very much presenting on this issue. Um, but, you know, there is a sit an interesting situation that happens with scientists that publish on this issue. Dr. Henry Lai many years ago found DNA damage in the animal studies he was doing. And this was pretty unprecedented to find animal to find DNA damage after cell phone radiation. And he was attacked and uh, there was a, a memo that was found between Motorola and the PR company where they said, we've, we've war game the science on Dr. Henry Lai's science. I mean, they attacked the study, criticized it. There was a lot of uh, you know media coming out saying the study had this problem or that problem. And that war gaming of the science 
is a strategy that has continued to this day where if a study comes out, it is attacked as not credible, uh, even when it is. So, so assuming there's a lot of studies that say there were problems with wireless radiation, what I was asking though is, are there also studies saying, no, no, wireless radiation is not a problem. There's, I mean, is, are there, you know, in other words, if I was arguing with someone in mm -hmm. somewhere and I said, look, here's thousands of articles showing this wireless radiation is problematic, would they be able to say, well, I also have thousands of credible large scale studies showing, this, showing wireless radiation is safe? Have you seen credible non-industry studies that are large that say there's no problem, wireless radiation is fine? Hmm, interesting question. So there are studies that show when when you do a study, like a, like an actual study, an experiment, they don't make conclusions like generally this means there's safety or not. When you have animals or bunnies, they, they do that. That happens in the reviews when you do reviews of a lot of studies. So there are studies that have seemed to show no effect. There are many times where those studies that show no effect uh are either funded by the industry, or uh, there are times where they are short-term studies. So there have been some studies that have recently come out, for example, but they did not even adequately measure or go the length of time that is really needed to see what are the effects that they were looking for. So that happens a lot where there are short-term studies that may not show an effect that's linked to long-term exposure. So there are studies on both sides and there's a heavy industry funding of the studies. And there are studies that some say were designed never to show an effect anyway. Do you ever That's find studies, do you ever find studies that are not funded by industry that really seem to be good quality, large scale, long-term that say that wireless radiation is totally safe? I have never seen a study like that. And there's certainly not one that proves safety. No. And, you, and you've seen a lot of studies that are credible, long-term and large scale that seem to indicate there is a risk with wireless radiation? Our scientists uh, published a review and it's actually several papers at this point concluding that radio frequency radiation meets criteria based on the evidence that we have now to be a human carcinogen. That is looking at the human studies and the animal studies. Uh, and so, and the mechanistic studies. So there's uh, oxidative stress, for example. Um, there was a review done on oxidative stress. So oxidative stress uh, is linked to many different neurodegenerative diseases. If you have cancer, you don't want to have a lot of oxidative stress. You want to decrease your oxidative stress. And the conclusion in that paper that looked at many different studies, okay, all over the map kind of studies, human animal cell said there is a trend there is a trend that that there that oxidative stress you know despite there being small and large and um all of these different studies there is an effect and people who are more vulnerable be you already sick be young and old will be less uh, able to mitigate that oxidative stress less able to handle it. Their bodies will be less resilient if you're more vulnerable. So there are many uh, hundreds of scientists that say it's clear. The science is clear that wireless radiation can cause harm and we need to change regulations. Among the scientists who, have, who are not industry scientists who have looked at this with no bias, are there many scientists who think wireless radiation is a health concern? Or how how many scientists are there that agree with your position that wireless radiation is a health concern? Well, the EMF scientist appeal has about, I think, around 250, maybe a little less or more than that, of scientists who have published in the field. So bioelectromagnetics is a very, it encompasses a lot of different uh, areas, and there are people that are experts in that, and they are they have published in the issue, on the issue. There was an appeal that was put out um, out of a U UK and international scientists and medical doctors and health practitioners. And I think that was 3,500 um, experts. Now, what's happened is 
If you don't know the issue and you're a medical doctor and you haven't been trained, you haven't gone to the EMF medical conference and one might simply go to what the FDA or the CDC or the FCC says to get your information. So there it says that all's well. However, I am not aware of hundreds of experts in electromagnetic fields that are saying this is safe, except there is a group at the um, the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. They have a great name. That is a great name, but they are uh, under 15 people. And they have been saying that wireless is safe unless it heats for years now. And many governments actually listen to what they say. Now at the FDA, for example, we don't even know who at the FDA is working on this. I, we met with them a few years ago with maybe one, two, three, four, five people around the table. I don't think all of them are there. And I don't think there's any more than that who's working on this issue because it's not even in the budget. At the EPA, they're fully defunded from working on this. And they've written us numerous letters saying, in response to your questions, we have no funded mandate. So at the FCC, they're not a health and safety agency. So if there are other scientists, um, there are about five in the United States that we see testifying for the wireless industry on a regular basis. Uh, and so I don't know who there's not, I don't know who the hundreds of scientists are that are promoting that wireless is safe. Uh, I don't believe they exist, actually. I think ICNRP ex exists, and I think industry-funded scientists exist. 